So uh, mostly I just want to talk about the goals of reduction and then show some reduction techniques. And to fully expose my biases, I think in, in proximal tibia fractures or plateau fractures, that the things that we're shooting for are stability of the joint, restoration of the mechanical axis, restoration of condylar width, an intact and functioning meniscus and articular congruity. And I would, I would uh, posit that if you accurately reduce the articular surface in a unicondylar fracture, then you will have indirectly provided stability, restored the mechanical axis, and reduced the condylar width. And all you have to do is repair the meniscus. So um, uh, even though you know, our, our literature is sometimes a little bit nihilistic about this, I, I think it's, it's important or it's a good thing to shoot for because it gives you everything else. Conversely, in a bicondylar fracture, if you do a bang up job on the joint, the only thing that that's giving you is condylar width and the rest of it you have to work for. And so the, the, the three tools that I are really my go-to for proximal tibia fractures to obtain a reduction are a femoral distractor to echo Dr. Rohrer's point. Um, you know, it's all about length. You, you, nothing can ever be reduced until it's out to length. Um, a set of uh, tamps uh, here, and, and this is one we have at our hospital that uh, different curves, angle sizes, and then a, a large periarticular clamp, or, or as we call it, the king tong, um, to help with that. So this is a 30-something uh, uh, guy who jumped uh, from pretty high up, and you can see he looks uh, here to have a fairly simple lateral plateau fracture, but the lateral view gives you a clue that this is something just a bit more. You can see some of the uh, kind of explosion posteriorly um, for that. And on the CT scan, it, uh, you can confirm that there is posterior column involvement in a fairly significant articular depression. And uh, here on the CT scan, the surface rendered images, you can see that there's some fragments in the back. And so I, I wanted to show this case to highlight uh, two things. One is, is the idea, as Dr. Rohr mentioned, of sort of fragment specific fixation and controlling what you want to control. But, but not to, to say going to the back, but number one, in order to achieve a reduction, I think the useful portion of a CT scan is seeing what needs to be moved out of the way. And so you can see we moved some of the joint out of the way to allow us to close the back down. And then really uh, how to reduce the joint. And so now that the medial column is stable, we can distract against that and use this femoral distractor to open up the joint and give us space to work. And through a submeniscal arthrotomy, we're able to directly visualize the joint. And then through the fracture line distally, we're able to use our tamp to elevate the joint and then hold it with uh, Kirchner wires and then eventually uh, secure it with a plate and screws. So, um, and then here the guy is uh, about a year out from his injury. And, and so the, the two critical things here are talking about distraction. So none of us would ever change our car tire without a, a jack. And, and to me, that's what trying to reduce uh, the articular surfaces without a distractor. And so uh, to me, that's a must have. And, and that's usually the biggest error that I see when patients are sent to me for possible revision is that that wasn't used. The second thing is just to have a little bit of a brief discussion about how to get to the joint. And so I think there are people who are containers who, who try to squeeze the joint and then work from within containing those pieces. And then there are people who are open bookers. And I would say I'm a, I'm a both. Um, it just depends on the fracture. It depends where the fracture lines exit. Depends what my plans are for fixation. But I think being familiar with both techniques and particularly studying the orientation of the joint and determining where you need to push to lift those back up to the surface. If something's really rotated, you know, uh, fully 90 degrees, you're going to have to bring your tamp in maybe from a different spot, sometimes from the medial side, and planning that out is useful. In order to, to highlight the importance of uh, length and distractors, here's a, a guy who um, is a maintenance guy and fell off the roof and he had a, a pelvic fracture and a bad uh, plafond injury, et cetera, but he had this bicondylar plateau and he got uh, X fixed, but this is what I call a caca fix. Um, it just kind of sagged and, and got depressed 
uh, over time. And so his uh, lateral femoral condyle was back in the joint by the time he got to me. And on these 3D surface uh, rendered images, what you can see is that uh, there's a lot of metaphyseal comminution, but there's a very clear spike posteromedially, and then um, some decent reads laterally as to the length of our reduction. And similarly here, you can see that the, there's a simple split in the medial side, but some lateral comminution. And so in this case, dueling distractors, I think is really uh, beneficial. You can put both of these in and really by alternately dialing in the medial side and producing length and valgus and the lateral side and producing, producing length and varus, you can get reasonable coronal alignment and a lot of space for you to work. Um, and then you can go to town. And so this will allow you to fine tune things. Conversely, once you have the medial side reduced, if you're going there first, you can lock in that medial distractor and then distract off of it to get into the lateral joint. So the, the thing I wanted to highlight about that medial reduction is this is a, a picture from the Harborview Tips and Tricks book. But I, I hear a lot of consternation about the medial reduction and how hard that is and going to figure four and all that. And, and I, I don't think it really is. And part of that is if you elevate the leg off the bed and allow the gastrocnemius muscle to hang free, it really increases the amount of space that you have to work. And so that simple trick, a couple of bumps, one behind the femur and one behind the, the heel, really changes a life for the surgeon and makes this much easier. And so you can see obtaining a, a direct medial reduction and working through that. And then again, our same techniques on the lateral side uh, give us a good coronal alignment. And here he is post-op. Uh, and he, he went on to heal uneventfully. So uh, hopefully what uh, we've imparted here is that you want to restore the mechanical axis, articular congruity and condylar width, and it's all about length, 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 and then tamps, clamps, and a distractor are, are what you need to get the job done. So I'll, I'll turn things over to, to, if there's any questions about this, um, Happy to answer some at this time. Otherwise, we'll let Dr. Tabrizi show uh, one or two of his cases and then have some discussion later. Jeff, I have a quick question for you. In some of your cases, it looked like you used a bone void filler. Yes. What were you using there? And could you talk a little bit about using that in the proximal tibia? So I, I used to use the enforced screw a lot, which was, I really enjoyed using it because it was a nice way to get bone void filler into the tibia, but man, getting bone void filler in a proximal tibia, especially if there's a lot of comminution, I feel like it just goes everywhere. So, but yeah. you had a really nice, it was very concentrated. So tell us. Yeah, how you well, the, the one guy, the, the lateral or the, the less severe plateau was an enforced screw. Um, I was very fond of that. I, I can't use it anymore at my new hospital and it's sort of been de-emphasized, but I was a big fan. Um, the other one, uh, was I think just a, a, a different calcium phosphate that was injected through that anteromedial comminution. Um, and, and so, yeah, what my choice of what I use is really determined by access points. If I have a good access point, I may use a, a fibular strut. If I have a well-contained defect, I liked the Enforce or a, um, a different calcium phosphate, although I find the other ones are a lot harder to inject. And uh, if it's an uncontained defect, then I, I may use allograft or more of like a moldable calcium phosphate putty. Uh, 